Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you that definition of that Webster in 1828. And the reason I like that the old definitions is because they haven't been <laughs> made politically correct or cleaned up by modern. Uh, it says pride. And you know, they weren't afraid. I'm just saying he wasn't afraid of offending people with what words really mean. Um, pride is an inordinate self-esteem. Um, the word self-esteem, I got to tell you something. I, you know, I went into education and I, I did most of it before I was a Christian. I got saved my senior year when I was about to student teach. And the words, and you know, bear, bear with me here. I don't want to offend anyone, but self-esteem, I kept hearing that all the time. Oh, you just got to build up their little self-esteem. And I was just like, I just really didn't understand. It, something just didn't seem right. Then later on, after I became a Christian, I was reading a book called Parenting by the Book, and it was by a, a Christian, uh, I think he was a Christian counselor or psychologist or whatever, but he's the guy that actually coined the term helicopter parent, so he's been in the... But I read this book, and it was amazing because he made me feel so good about my kind of my kind of eh feeling about self-esteem. If you take apart self you know, self-esteem, the word esteem means to, um, to value or to worship when you esteem someone. So when we're teaching children, when we're, I mean, when we're, um, you know, trying to get across to them, we're trying to build up their self-esteem. We're really trying to build up their self-worship. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> and he also, this guy had all these studies and all these statistics, and I'll just tell you right now, I'm terrible with trivia like that. But the essence of it was, he, he said there was a study done of prisoners um, in high security, maximum security prisons. They did kind of psychoanalysis of them to see what their self-esteem levels were. And what do you think, what do you think? High. They were very high. Wow. And crazily enough, the characteristics of these, self, these high self-esteem criminals were very much identical to toddlers. You know, toddlers have very high self-esteem. They say, mine, and if it's yours, it's mine. You know, if you're looking at it, it's mine. You know, they, they, and that's the same kind of mentality that criminals have because that's why they can steal things and go, you know, that's yours, but it's mine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, you know, this, this man that wrote the book, Parenting by the Book, he, he said a better thing to teach your children is self-respect. Because if you, they are respecting themselves, then they already, you know, they're, they're learning how to respect others. They respect others' property. It's almost the complete opposite of, of uh, instilling self-esteem in a child. So I think as a teacher, if you're trying to build up, or a parent, of course, if you're trying to build up your child's self-esteem, you're really causing yourself more problems down the road. And, and also he pointed out that children can decipher between what's real um, praise, you know, when they've done something legitimately and you're saying, hey, that was great, or when you're trying to build them up on false praise, they can tell the difference. So I'm just saying self-esteem is part, the whole building that up is really building up a pr the pride in a child. And, you know, they already have a good head start on it already, and then we're we're putting more steam behind it. Another uh, definition of pride from the 1828 dictionary, kind of long, but it says, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority in talents, beauty, wealth, accomplishments, ranks, or elevation in office, which manifests itself in lofty airs, distance, reserve, and often in contempt of others. Whew. Yeah, that sounds terrible, but I'm sure we can all <laughs> identify times that we've, you know, we've done that because it's part of it's part of our nature. It's part of this fallen world. Another definition is insolence, rude treatment of others. So that is pretty much what eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's pretty much what it did for us. And like I said yesterday, when Eve, when she disobeyed and Adam disobeyed with her. They were basically 
the, you know, the devil was whispering to them, you know, you need this and did God really say and all of those things. And what they did was they took in that poison of his pride. And when they did it, it went through their entire being, spirit, soul, and body. And it, what I believe happened spiritually is because death, if you believe that death is separation from God, event, right, right then they did die spiritually because they were separated from God. And then they were expelled from all the good things, all the blessings. I think uh, Andrew Murray said, uh, is a terrible spiritual power that comes from outside of us, but also grows within us. So now we've got this thing that not only are we fighting on the outside, we've taken it inside of us and it's growing. You know, like I talked about boosting little self-esteem, we do that for ourselves. We're boosting this pride. And then we do recognize there's times where that pride rises up and we're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. And then without God, without the power of God, we are helpless to combat this. We have no weapons against it. I mean, she took this in. We got, we got all the uh, destruction. Nature fell. The blessings that God had for us were completely cut off. So, you know, that's a, that's a bad place to be. And one thing, let me see what he said here. If I, um, he says, we need a power and a life because we are spiritually dead outside of ourselves. So we're going to need something from the outside, like I talked about yesterday, coming in. And humility, even though we don't know much about it, or at least I didn't before I did this study, that is, it's the basis of our redemption. That's the one thing we need. You know, like I said, Jesus said, deny yourselves. If anyone wants to come after me, you have to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Um, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, and th then the next question we'll, we'll get into a little bit later is, what are we going to do? We're, we're helpless. We've got this thing full of the poison of pride and the desire. <clears throat> it just hit me really hard. The desire to be as God. How many times every day do we get tempted to take the bull by the horns and take care of the situation ourselves and, or to control somebody else? And, and that's really, I mean, if we call things what they are, that's when we really can deal with what they are. But we're trying to be as God. And that's why, you know, I think about uh, which um, pride, I'm sorry, um, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. I thought about that one time and I thought, you know, witchcraft is really trying to control people. And that's all rooted in pride, too. Did you have another? Yeah, pride is everything. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and an arrogant spirit before a fall. So that's true. If you want, I, I was thinking about that just before that that scripture. It's like if if that's what you if you want to walk in pride and haughtiness and like it talked about in the 1828 definition. If we if you want to look down on other people, then th that's what you're signing up for: destruction and a fall. I don't know about you, but I got enough <laughs> got enough problems that I don't need to add destruction. That's that's a pretty big deal. Anybody, and please feel free to throw in any comments. Well, just remind me of King Saul with his pride and how the father sent the evil spirit on him to, you know, even at that last hour, you know, that last, at the last minute, perhaps he would fall on his face to return. But before it's gone. I don't know. I, uh huh. Remind me of King Saul. Because he, he was pretty far. Yeah, it's more than just putting away the building blocks and the baby dolls. It's it's the evil part because we're supposed to be training children. They obviously need it. They need to know the path to walk in if we're supposed to train them. So that that's true. Did you have something? Um, actually, confirmation of what I was talking to you today with Derek. 
Eric when we were there at the camp store um, uh, with the with the whole witchcraft thing and, and why it's probably so appealing to the younger generation now who was raised with the helicopter pairing <coughs> and the uh, participation in trophies because rather than waiting for the rock move through us and things happening in, in Yahoo's timing for us, yeah, witchcraft is a way for them to feel like that they have control and power to make things happen themselves and it gives them a sense of when they want it. And and a sense of identity too. They're in a group right. and they feel powerful and in control. Yeah. Did you have something? Yeah, I I watched a series of videos on this and one thing that they talked about in one of the videos was like with Hollywood. It's all witchcraft. Yeah. Like they have the whole thing where you watch it, you're participating in witchcraft. Wow, you've just opened a door. You just opened the door, and then, of course, pharmacia. You know, anything mm -hmm. that seeks to control you in some way is witchcraft. And that covers, you're exactly right, that covers a lot. Yeah. Even outside of Hollywood. Yeah. 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 Thank you, that's good. Well, um, the next thing I want to talk about was the spirit of pride. You know, and I wrote down here, we first got infected with the spirit when Eve listened to Satan. And the poison went through her. And this is what this was the quote I wanted. He says that she destroyed her complete dependence on God, which destroyed her everlasting happiness. So you you know and that's another thing. The world wants everybody wants to be happy, but they don't really out in the world I don't think they really care how they get that way a lot of times. You know, the means justifies the ends. I've told my kids, you know, talking about happiness just for a minute, you know, I always told my kids when I learned the difference between happiness and joy, it really makes you understand your motivation toward things because happiness comes from the word happenstance and, you know, it's basically what's happening around you. So if your happiness depends on your circumstances, you know, circumstance means the circle that you stand in. <laughs> And so if your happiness is depending on, oh, the weather or somebody, how other people are treating you, you're going to be on this roller coaster and always thinking that you're getting the, the raw end of the deal because, you know, your circumstances change just like the weather. And, but joy in the Lord is something that no matter what your circumstances are, that as long as you hang on to your joy, you know, Nehemiah says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I've kept that in mind because if you are feeling like I'm not happy today or things are going wrong and you start to feel your joy leaving, that tells me my strength to stand in the Lord is leaving right, right along with it. So it's time to stop and get realigned with, you know, what God says and let the circumstances, you know, let them play out because God's in control ultimately. And if you don't let your circumstances dictate your happiness, because now we're back to, are your emotions leading you or is the word of God leading you? And to me, that's the difference between joy and happiness. It's a matter of God's truth or your emotions. Who's really in charge of your life? And, you know, maybe that's not a happy thing <laughs> for you to hear, but it ultimately brings you the true happiness, not the phony you know, flying away. I mean, it's just the temporary worldly happiness that people are trying. I mean, that's why people, you know, people get into drugs, people get into alcohol, because right now they want to feel happy. Right now they want to escape their circumstances. But in the long run, you know, Satan knows he's got destruction waiting for you if you continue, you know, down that path.